Hello everyone and welcome back to this full festival preview for the 2024 Cheltenham Festival. This time looking at day two of the festival. Hopefully you enjoyed my day one video that I put out previously. Go back and watch that if you haven't already. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going through each one of the seven races in day two here, giving my thoughts and giving a selection in each one of those races. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button if you do like this video. But without further ado, let's get into it. So first up on day two, we have the Barring Bingham Novices Hurdle, the race that was previously called the Ballymore in previous years. And I think what we have here is a really, really interesting race to pick apart. Now, Ballyburn still heads this market. Obviously, we spoke about Ballyburn in quite a bit of detail in the previous video because it looks likely, especially if you look at the exchanges, that he's going to be going for the Supreme Novices Hurdle, the first race of day one. So for the purposes of assessing this race, let's assume that that is the case and Ballyburn does go for the Supreme. Obviously, caveat there, if he does go for this race, he's got a great chance of winning it. But let's assume Ballyburn goes to the Supreme. Next in the market, you've got Mystical Power, who again, as I referenced in the previous videos, has those question marks on whether he goes to the Supreme or goes here for the Barring Bingham. Does actually look like he may well come here for the race. Now, hasn't gone over the two mile distance yet this season, having won that Moscow Flyer impressively. I think obviously has a great chance if goes here. But behind Mystical Power and Ballyburn, you've then got some really interesting form lines to consider. Now, first of all, you've got Il Atlantique and Reading Tommy Wrong coming out that Lawless of Nace race. They finished first and second, Reading Tommy Wrong winning that race. Um, and I think they hold a strong form line. There was some good horses behind on the day in the likes of Lecky Watson, Croke Park, Firefox, for example. Um, looks like Reading Tommy Wrong will probably go for the Albert Bartlett. Let's cover that in a second. Um, then you've got Slade Steele, who's run twice this season, two impressive runs, uh, one of which was second behind Ballyburn. I think Slade Steele has a great chance, again, in this race, four to one shot currently. You've got Predators Gold, another good horse, a Willie Mullins horse, who two seconds in the last two runs, both in grade ones, um, one over two miles, one over two miles six at the Dublin Racing Festival. Probably didn't stay that two mile six distance and therefore makes sense to drop down, albeit only one furlong, but drop down to this two mile five barring Bingham distance. I think this year, the UK do have a few shots. Obviously, it's dependent on who actually goes to this race. Um, you've got Handstands, who looks like a solid horse, unbeaten, beat Django Bay on last start. Looks like Handstands will come here. You've got horses like Gidley Park and Captain Teague. Probably both of them will likely go for the Albert Bartlett. Um, then you've got Peaky Boy, you've got Django Bay, you've got Jinko Blue in the same colours as Django Bay. Not 100% sure who will go for this race, but I'm sure a few of them will, and I'm sure they will all come here with decent chances for the UK at least. Then you've got a lot of horses at bigger prices who, well, one could be anything, and two may or may not go for this race. So I'm not going to dissect each one of those individually. I think one that does stand out is Mr Giff for Willie Mullins. Really impressive on uh, Soul Start so far. If Mr Giff comes here, obviously he has a great chance. Um, but the one I'm siding with out of all of those potential options is Il Atlantique. I think Il Atlantique is the most solid bet in this race. Certainly the most solid form this season. Um, run twice. First run was a 20 lengths maiden hurdle win. Second um, start was that second place that I just referred to behind Reed and Tommy Wrong. I think probably just got outstayed on the day behind Reed and Tommy Wrong, who could be a potentially brilliant stayer. We'll cover Reed and Tommy Wrong when we look at the Albert Bartlett in future days. Um, but Il Atlantique is going to be my bet here. Currently priced around the four to one mark. Really like the horse. Willie Mullins has obviously won this race in the last two years with Segurha and Impere Pass. I think has a really good shot on Il Atlantique, and that's why my. Day two, race one selection, bar in Bingham, is Il Atlantique, currently priced at four to one. Next up, we've got the Brown Advisory Novices Chase, and this market is obviously heavily dominated by the odds on favorite factor file, currently priced around four to five in most markets. Now, I absolutely love that because most of you will know that I've got factor file in the Antipost series that we put together, the 20 bets that we put together at 16 to one. So Factor File could put us well on the way to breaking even after the second race of day two in that series, which would be lovely with uh, plenty of great bets still to roll. Now, we have to look at this race subjectively at this point in time, though. That's the purpose of this video. And after Factor File, there's three horses in the market who are single digit odds. You've got Stay Away Fay, um, last year's festival winner. You've got Grey Dawning, who's looked really good this season. And you've got Monty Star. 
Now, I think if we look at those three in isolation, they've actually got great chances for their trainers. I'd say stay away Faye is probably Paul Nichols' best shot at winning a, having a festival winner this year at the festival. Um, Monty Starr, probably up there in Henry de Bromhead's best chance of a festival winner as well. And, I mean, Grey Dawning, obviously one of the Skelton's best shots at a winner for the festival too. Now, looking at Nichols and Skelton there, we know that UK trainers have a great shot in this race normally. Uh, Nicky Henderson won it multiple times, Paul Nichols won it multiple times, Tristan Davies has won it, Venetia Williams won it two years ago with La Homme Press. Um, so they definitely have to be respected, they definitely have chances. But I absolutely can't see past Factor File winning this race. I think Factor File is an absolute superstar in the waiting. Lots of people, you know, on social media have tipped up the horse as a future Gold Cup winner. And we've seen horses go from this race, the likes of Bob Worth, the likes of Lord Windermere, for example, win this race and then go on the following year to win the Gold Cup. So, look, I'm not suggesting necessarily that Factor File is going to win the Gold Cup next year in 2025, but what I am saying is that he is going to win this race, the Brown Advisory Novices Chase, and I'll be absolutely delighted if he does so. So my selection in this race, Factor File to win the Brown Advisory Novices Chase. Race number three of day two, and it's the Coral Cup. The first handicap that comes on day two of the festival. And what I will say for this race first off, and I reference this when talking about the Ultima in the day one video, is that for this race, it'll be a big handicap. Bookies will often play, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight places in some cases. So wouldn't be playing this anti-post if you're looking for an each way punt. I'd be waiting for the day. But like I said there, another big handicap. I'm not going to spend ages dissecting loads of runners um, because I'm deliberately keeping these videos and these previews quite short and sweet. So let's look at the head of the market. You've got three horses there at the head of the market in single figure prices. You've got Samajest, you've got Langadan, and you've got Doddy the Great. Now Samajest has been talked about a lot for this race, but actually now looks like he's going to be going for the Martin Pipe. So I'd be steering clear of him. He's currently the favourite for this race on most markets, but I'd be steering clear of him. You've then got Langadan, who's going to be my selection in this race. Let's come back to him in a second. Um, a polarising horse for many reasons, but let's come back to that. Dolly the Great, who's priced around 8-1 to one in most non running no bet markets, actually may not get into this race because he's so well handicapped that he's going to need a lot to drop out to actually get into this race. If he does get in, obviously got a cracking chance, but I wouldn't be backing him, especially in anti-post markets, because I don't think he'll necessarily go here. So that leaves Langadan, last year's winner of the race, who won the, won the race off a mark of 141 last year. Now, after a number of disappointing runs this year, he's back down to a mark of 141 in his eight year old season, and that gives him a great chance of winning this race again. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on, you know, has he maybe not been trying? Have they maybe creatively uh, lost those races so that they get a nice handicap mark again to target this race, which may or may not be the case. But either way, the simple facts are. He's off the same mark as last year, and for me, that gives him a fantastic chance of winning again this year. Currently priced around the 7-1 to one mark, my punt in the Coral Cup will be Langadan. Race number four on day two is the Queen Mother Champion Chase, and I think this one is pretty straightforward. I think El Fabiolo just wins, doesn't he? Um, now, I don't want to be boring. I don't want to sit here picking odds on favourites. I love trying to go for the quirky option, but when it's this straightforward and staring you in the face, I think we just have to play it safe and go for the most likely winner of the race. Now, El Fabiolo is the festival nap for many people. Most people think he's going to win this race. I think he's going to win this race. I think there's horses in this race, like Captain Guinness and Edward Stone, who have definite place chances, but it looks to be between those two market principles, at least, in John Bon and El Fabiolo for the win in this race. Now, John Bond, we've seen this season, uh, actually beat Edward Stone twice over two miles, both over fences, obviously. Um, but El Fabiolo looks, you know, even a class above John Bond. Beat John Bond in the Arkle last year quite comfortably. And I think if there was a negative to put on El Fabiolo, it's the jumping. El Fabiolo's jumping, it's probably fair to say, is slightly um, uncertain, slightly ropey at times. But the engine that this horse has means that he can afford a few ropey jumps and still win this race probably quite comfortably. So no need to overthink this one. Selection in the champion chase is El Fabiolo, priced at one to two, so you're not gonna get much juice in that price, but I think he just wins. Now 
Now race number five of day two is the cross country. And just before I go into it, I just wanna say, have you subscribed to the channel? If you haven't already, please take a second to do that now. Not only will you be notified of future videos, we've still got day three and day four to come, but also it really helps me out. So I appreciate that if you could do that. But onto the cross country, an interesting race, a race that I really like, but not everyone does. I've seen people suggest that maybe this one should come out of, uh, of Cheltenham. But I like it, I think it adds a different element to the festival. And this year we've got three horses at the top of the market in Delta Work, Manella Indo, Galvin, I guess four if you had Coco Beach to that mix as well. I guess the obvious starting point here is Delta Work, who's won this race in the previous two years, the 2021-2022 winner of this race. But this year we've got Manella Indo in the race, and Manella Indo is a horse I love. Manella Indo will be my selection for this race, currently priced around the seven to four mark. Now I've already put up Manella Indo in the anti-post series um, at seven to one, so a 30 pound bet at seven to one there. So go back and watch my thoughts there if you are interested in those. Um, I'm gonna cover them a bit simpler here, um, but I think first of all, the horse loves Cheltenham. You know, the horse has a great record at the festival, has won the Gold Cup, has come second in the Gold Cup, has won the Albert Bartlett, has come second in the RSA, the Brown Advisory. Clearly loves Cheltenham, clearly a top quality horse. I think he's going to add the cross country to that resume as well this year. We saw Manila Indo out in December at Cheltenham over the cross country course. Came fourth on the day, giving away loads of weight to the top three there. Um, but, you know, probably a fitness run, hasn't run since that day. And I think, you know, did everything that he needed to do on that day to show that this is going to be his target for the festival and that he really genuinely has a great shot of winning. So 11 years old now, the same as Delta Work. Looks like they're going to battle it out at the head of the market. You've also got Galvin in this market, who I think it might, you know, it looks like it's potentially going to be soft ground. I don't want to go into ground too much. because We don't know what that's going to be like. But if it is very soft, Galvin will probably get pulled from this race and won't go. Coco Beach, I don't fancy at all. Um, and I will say the race has probably got slightly easier for Manella Indo in that Conflated is now not going to be going for this race and looks likely to be going for the Ryanair. Um, so therefore, like I said, Manella Indo and Delta Work are likely to battle this one out. And I'm going to be siding with Manella Indo to win again at Cheltenham. So my pick, 7-4, Manella Indo to win the cross country. Okay, so the penultimate race of day number two, race number six, and it's the Grand Annual. And probably fair to say that this one is not a festival classic um, and doesn't necessarily even look like too much of a stern test this year. Um, now, the horse that I've landed on, and I've gone through each one of the runners in this race. Uh, many have got chances. Many have actually been in my tracker this season. But the horse, like I say, that I've landed on is a horse called Calico for Dan Skelton, who's currently priced at 16 to one in the markets. Now, I'm going to go for Calico each way at 16 to 1, but I will reiterate that bookies are likely to be offering bigger places on the day, so I wouldn't necessarily be taking that in anti post markets. But I think Calico, um, well, first of all, we know that the horse is going to go for this race. Dan Skelton in his stable tour has suggested that the Grand Annual will be the target for Calico, which is very important at this stage given that, you know, a number of handicapped horses, we don't know which race they're going to go for at the festival. Now, the horse has enough chase runs to cope with a hotly contested two-mile handicap at the festival without being too overexposed. Calico is actually the horse, if you remember, that ran in that two-runner race with John Bon earlier in the season. Um, and at least gave John Bon something to think about on the day. I think finished about three and a half lengths behind in the end. Um, but given an official rating of 143, that'll be the rating that the horse um, will have going into the Cheltenham Festival. So it's going to get in nice and low in the weights, which I think gives Calico a good chance to give Dan Skelton that handicap double on the day with Langer Dan earlier in the day. Calico in this one. But I'm going to be taking Calico each way, 16 to 1 for the Grand Annual. That's my selection here. The final race, race seven on day two, is the champion bumper. Another race that divides opinion. Some people like this, some people don't like this because you know it's the only flat race of the Jumps Festival. Um, but like I say, the last race of the day, the sun is setting over Presby Park. We've got the champion bumper. I enjoy it. Um, and it looks like we've got a good field this year. Slightly weaker than maybe it could have been because the likes of Maureen and Jerobo Mackin have been pulled out with setbacks recently. Um, Jerobo Mackin, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is the horse who won that bumper at the Dublin Racing Festival, which is normally a really good indicator into this race. Uh, the last five winners of that race have gone on to finish first, second, second, first, first in the champion bumper. 
So obviously, I mean, I was there at the Dublin Racing Festival at Leopardstown, and after that race, after Jeroboam Mackin won that race, I was thinking that straight away to this race, the champion bumper. Um, but sadly, isn't going to go here. I think that definitely brings in the likes of You Ought to Know, who came second in that race, and the Yellow Clay, for Gordon Elliott, who came fourth in that race into contention here, so they've definitely got to be seriously considered. Um, then, if we look through some other horses in the market, you've got Tishan, uh, probably the best of the English horses if he goes here. He definitely holds a good chance, but I'd say fair to say I was scarred by Queen's Gamble last year and therefore I'm not going to be putting up a UK runner in this race. I'll be sticking to the uh, the Irish contingent. Of that Irish contingent, the biggest hype horse this year has been Romeo Coolio. Massively tipped as you know an absolute rocket before debut run where he did win but wasn't necessarily overly impressive. But Gordon Elliott still seems hot on this horse, so I think fair to say still has a great chance of winning. Then you've got plenty of horses, as you always do with a bumper, who just could be absolutely anything. Um, not going to go through them all individually, but if I had to pick one out, Argento Boy looks like he has a great shot of the, uh, winning the race based on the fact that he was so impressive in that one run. But like I referenced there, could be absolutely anything, could be a superstar, could have just beat nothing on the day. But my selection in this race, I am staying loyal to the Antipost series, where, as I referenced many times, I put up 20 bets, but I put up Jalen Duderay at 7-1 to one to win this race. And my thoughts haven't really changed. I think Jalen Duderay is a very solid option for this race. Still priced around that kind of 7-1 to one mark, um, so I didn't necessarily get too much value in the Antipost series, but I'm still going to be back in Jalen Duderay to win this race. Now, in Jalen Duderay's last race, beat Redemption Day, who finished second, um, Redemption Day actually came third in that Dublin Racing Festival bumper that I referenced. So that looks like a solid form line. Jalen Duderay was actually put away for this race after that, um, that last run. And, you know, Gordon Elliott seems to be very impressed by the horse and seems to feel that the horse has a great chance in the champion bumper. So I'm keeping it simple. I'm again sticking to my guns. I genuinely think Jalen Duderay has a great chance of winning after two impressive runs this season. My selection in the champion bumper, Jalen Duderay at 7-1. So that concludes video number two, day number two of the 2024 Cheltenham Festival. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching. Let me know your thoughts. Drop me a like on this video. Drop me your comments with any selections you're going to be making, any agreements or disagreements to my selections. And please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Just to quickly recap the seven horses that we've got in this video. For the Barring Bingham, we've gone for Il Atlantique. The Brown Advisory, Factor File. The Coral Cup, Langer Dan. The Queen Mother Champion Chase, El Fabiolo. The Cross Country, Manila Indo, the Grand Annual, Calico Each Way, and the Bumper, Jalan Duderays. I'll stick them all on screen, or I will have stuck them on screen whilst I just said that there. Good luck with those selections. Hopefully we have some winners, and I'll be back soon with my day-free video. See you there.